Very good morning to all of you. And, and first of all, let me thank Professor Jinjanwala and colleagues for making this wonderful forum uh, so that we can all interact. I gave you a, a small write up of two pages reimagining in their true waters. And I'm not going to go through that. I would like you to spend some time about that. Water is just a small molecule, but it includes many, many interesting aspects which we don't really understand, and I'm not going to get into those aspects of water. But water is the only, or the most important inheritance of this planet. And that water is evident in this picture. This picture was taken by Voyager 1 on February 14, long ago in 19, around 1990. And as Voyager was passing, well, looking at the solar system, and went just past Uranus, and it looked back and took this beautiful picture, and what you see is nothing but water. And that water on this planet is finite. It is just 33 into 10 to the power 45 molecules. It is that precise, no molecule of water. Well, not a lot of molecules don't exchange between the Earth and the solar system. What it tells you is that if we have problems on water, we have to solve those problems within this planet. And that is what I wanted to talk to you about. Can you just play that video, please? Water is at the center stage. Water connects to everything that you see in the sustainable development. Water has this variety and diversity. Even in India, when we start looking at solutions for water, we have to understand that variety and diversity. And of course, it provides opportunities. Now, per capita water availability is just 1,500 uh, cubic meters in India. And that water and its benefits, as was said previously, should reach everyone. And we have not built technologies and management to do this. Look at this. For you to have quality water, there are three S's needed. One is, we have to store water well, we have to be sensitive to various requirements of water, and we have to be smart. Look at the average rainfall of India, which is not bad at all. But then we store just about 8% of that water. Water, therefore, has to be stored well with all the technologies that we have. Most nations, developed nations, store something like 250% of their rainfall. Well, there's a lot of technology there. Now you look at water is not only for human beings, it is for all the human, uh, all the animals and life forms. Therefore, one has to be sensitive to the diversity. Why are we talking about it? 83% of the freshwater species have declined globally in the past 50 years. India, in most of the rivers, the freshwater diversity has declined by more than 50%. All the rivers. We are talking about a, a doomsday scenario as far as diversity is concerned. GDP, well, people talk about it. If, if we have to grow GDP, can we cap the freshwater withdrawals? Now look at the US. The freshwater withdrawals have been capped at this position at 1974, although the GDP is growing. This is called peak water. And that looks at a number of new technologies. And therefore, one has to be smart. And that smartness should lead to new kind of technologies in energy, food, clothing, construction, manufacturing, and beyond. And water is big. In every scale that you look at, each one of these, in gaps, opportunities, and in satisfaction. But when I say magnitude of industry, one should look at what is in water. People say that for us to have a globally connected water network, the money needed is about $60 trillion. 
What does that mean? We don't have that much of resources. That would mean that only 44% of the Asian population and 36% of the African population will have a connected water network even by 2050. Now, we have to also look at these numbers carefully. What is India's GDP? Somewhere around $13 trillion. Not GDP, I'm talking about total wealth of India. And total wealth of USA is somewhere around $130 trillion. What that means is that there's a huge money opportunities in water. Look at those opportunities. Those opportunities are in all of these contaminants, so to say. Well, solutions may be, but that's a very tiny fraction of that money. Well, we may not have time to look at all those diverse areas. But India requires a huge variety of technologies because India is, well, at minus 45 degrees up in the sea, actually in glacier, at 15% relative humidity, or you, cannot, you may not be able to see 45 degrees plus down and about 99% relative humidity. That requires a huge diverse variety of technologies. And across this, you will see drought at various levels. All of this would mean a huge number of technologies. And that also takes us, this is about, well, river water, drinking water, etc. You should also look at the diverse other kind of issues. In agriculture, we are running 67% of agriculture on groundwater. That means we have declined the groundwater resources tremendously, and a large number of districts are water stressed, and number of opportunities lie in all of those. Do we have sustainable solutions? Well, look at India. What do we have? We have a lot of, uh, well, we have a lot of sunlight. Can we run a huge variety of technologies on sun? It is possible to run all of these technologies, and not just freshwater technologies, but also desalination, also grey water recycling, wastewater recycling, a number of other things, and all can be run on photovoltaics with today's technology. It's also important to measure. When you start measuring, look at this measurement, uh, well, scale of that business. It is estimated to be this much in India alone, if you want to look at with diverse possibilities. And you can do this with techniques such as these, but today's spectrometers are becoming just as tiny as this. And tomorrow, right here in ICCW, you will see this device. You can put this into a mobile phone, and you can do measurement. And that measurement is being happening. You know, it's happening today. Well, Gel Jeevan Mission is doing with other kinds of sensors. And this is a dashboard of Gel Jeevan Mission with all of those diverse contaminants and flow and characteristics being analyzed today. Look at the diverse possibilities that this would throw up, throw open in every minute if you were to measure all these things. That would lead to hydroinformatics. And that hydroinformatics will take us to digital twin of water resources and that would go to water 4.0 and that would be something that we should do inclusively, realizing fully well that we don't have to dye our cotton, contaminate our rivers. We have all these cotton, natural cotton. We may have to rediscover this so that we don't have to contaminate rivers. We may have to look at new kinds of agriculture because there is a lot of traditional agriculture here which can enrich iron, enrich uh, various other kinds of good nutrients. And arsenic can be rejected in certain kinds of rice varieties even if they grow in arsenic with soil. That would mean a lot of policy and great initiatives of that. Let me stop this with one vision. Well, our dreams become reality with material. Look at this book of 1865, written by Jules Verne. He talked about sending a rocket to moon. The material chosen to send a rocket to moon was aluminum. Aluminum had just been discovered and aluminum's first industrial production started only in 1879. But you look at this uh, possibility, what aluminum has done. I would like to tell you that water can be produced from hydrogen, right? Water can be produced from hydrogen. And that is a combustion product. But at the same time, water can be desalinated using that energy. A lot of excess energy is possible and the product is water, the process will produce water, and the excess energy can run the world. And that is what 
people are talking about is affordable, inclusive, sustainable, contextual excellence uh, for India. Look at the numbers. This reaction is 286,000 joules per mole of hydrogen, that is 2 grams of hydrogen. 1 kg of solar hydrogen is some number, maybe around 700 rupees, but it could become 150 soon. It can make four, 143 million joules of energy. Desalination, the best of desalination available today is 2.4 kilowatt hour or 8.84 million joules for one cubic meter of water. One kg of hydrogen can therefore make 16.56 cubic meters of water or 0.9 paisa per liter. It's also had, of course, efficiency. You have to have the, the car note cycle, thermodynamics and all that. What does that mean? That means that we can run the world sustainably, not producing more CO2. And this innovation can happen here at IIT Madras. This would lead to new businesses and new opportunities, real businesses and real opportunities. That, of course, world will need to be water literate. And that would mean new teachers and new innovators and new students of tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you.